Hello and welcome, I'm Ashley and today I'm having a good skin day and on good skin days, those days where I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love my skin today. On those days, the very last thing I wanna do is put on foundation, so I don't. On some days, if I don't wanna put on foundation, I'll just go with no makeup, but there are days that I just wanna look a little more fresh and a little more polished and just liven everything up a little bit. So today I'm gonna to be showing you my routine for those days where I don't wanna wear foundation, but I still want a nice, fresh makeup look. I'd like to thank Skin Store for sponsoring the skin prep portion of today's video. They were kind enough to share a discount code that will get you 25% off of all of the Rodeo products I'm using to prep my skin today. That code is Ashley25 and it works on Skin Store Dot com. I don't make any money off of that. It's just a way for you to get a discount if you're interested in any of those products. I will put the code and all of the product links in the description box below as always. Don't adjust your screen. The lighting is correct. This is how pale I am naturally without any self tanner on in case you've ever wondered. This is me without self tanner. I love my skin this way. I just tend to like the way that foundation looks better when I have a self tan. So most days when I don't have a self tan, I only self tan like once a week. Uh, once that wears off, if I you know have a few days before I'm gonna self tan again, then I generally use this routine of not wearing foundation because I just tend to like my very fair skin the way it is better without foundation. My skin is completely bare. I have only done my cleanser this morning because we're gonna be starting with skin prep. Skin prep for me is the most important step always, especially when I'm doing no foundation, but if I am wearing foundation, it's still to me the most important because I think when you're in your early 20s, sure, you can get away with it. Like most days you're having a good skin day, but you know, once you hit your late 20s, I've had a child, I'm 30 now, I definitely notice that I cannot just treat my skin like crap and expect it to look really radiant. So skin prep for me is always super important. Now, one of the first steps and one of the biggest kind of concerns I have when I'm not going to be wearing foundation are my under eyes because I have very fair skin and it's almost like translucent under here. You can see it just looks like a little bit like bluish right there. It doesn't really bother me. I really actually have no problem going out like this, but I want to look more pepped up. I want to look more awake and I really want to plump this area up right here because since I do have dry skin, I kind of can sometimes feel a little dehydrated under the eyes and I'll feel a little bit like sunken in. So I wanna plump that up, hydrate it back up, and one of my favorite, favorite things to do to do that are eye patches. And I am in love with these from Rodeal. These are the Dragon's Blood Jelly Eye Patches. These are fantastic. They have dragon's blood in them. Dragon's blood is an extract that they get. It's like a resin that comes from a specific tree that's often found in the Amazon. It gives these eye patches that nice cooling effect that I think we have come to expect from eye gels. But the real like stars, in my opinion, the real star ingredients in here are something called raspberry ketones. Those are what, they're, it's like a compound, like a chemical compound that is found in raspberries and it's what gives raspberries their scent. So these actually to me smell a lot like raspberries. I have a few products from the Dragon's Blood line. I actually just gifted my husband a night cream from the Dragon's Blood line for Valentine's Day and he absolutely loves it and he loves the scent. He's very particular. He doesn't like anything that's fragrancy. He likes very natural scents. This line has a very natural raspberry scent to it and I think it's probably from those raspberry ketones. These also have hyaluronic acid in them so that's gonna help trap moisture and these are just really good at plumping. For me an eye patch what I'm always looking for is something that's gonna plump that area up. I don't necessarily just need something that's gonna cool it down because my dark circle I really don't have dark circles. I just kind of get a little bit hollow under the eyes so I want that plumping and these achieve that. The next concern I always want to tackle is dullness. When you're fair, 
as I am, dullness can kind of make you look very one-dimensional. I think it can do that to pretty much anyone with any skin tone, but I've only ever been this, this pale in my life. <laughs> So I don't know. I just know that if my skin looks dull, I feel very one-dimensional and I don't like that. I want to look at a smooth surface. So the ingredients that I love for smoothing my skin are things like lactic acid, glycolic acid, vitamin C, and I recently got to try this product from Rodeal, which has all three, but in a format I had never used before. This is the Vit C Brightening Tonic from Rodeal. Again, it has the vitamin C, the glycolic acid, and the lactic acid, which are three ingredients my skin absolutely loves. I usually use these ingredients at night, I still do, but in this toner, this tonic or toner, they're in there in a concentration that's safe and gentle enough for me to use during the day, which I like because I can kind of use this to tone my skin and basically just like very gently scrub away any dead skin cells that maybe my exfoliating serums missed the night before. It has a really nice like vitamin C kind of scent to it. It smells like a really high-end orange juice. Like if Macy's sold orange juice, it would smell like this. Sorry for the lisp, you guys. This, <laughs> I just put in new uh, Invisalign trays two days ago and I'm still adjusting. I didn't realize you have to like adjust every time you put in new trays, but apparently you do. This tonic is so nice, it's super refreshing. I love things that are refreshing in the morning. And my favorite part of this is there's like this feeling when I put it on my skin after it's been setting there for like maybe like 10 to 15 seconds, I start to feel like this little effervescence on my skin. It's almost like it's not quite a tingling because it's so gentle. It's like a step below a tingling. I would describe it as like, baby Alka-Seltzer bubbles on my skin and I can feel that it's, you know, it's working. It's doing something. It's, you know, sweeping away any skin cells that were missed last night, any dead skin cells, not alive ones. We, we don't want alive ones to go away. I cannot start my day without moisturizer. I actually like physically am hurt every time I think about all the days in my early 20s where I just skipped moisturizer because my skin was, you know, it was perfect. It was going to be perfect forever. Silly, silly Ashley. I'm not in my 20s anymore, and because I'm not in my 20s anymore, I am now losing collagen production at a rate of 1% a year. Did you know that? Every year, once you turn 30, your collagen production, your skin's natural production of collagen, decreases by 1%. So I like to stimulate collagen growth by using red light therapy at night, but I have for a couple years now also enjoyed using like collagen ampules, little ampules of actual collagen, breaking those apart and putting them in my moisturizer on days that I feel a little more hollow than normal and I need a little extra plumping to my skin. So I was extremely excited to get the opportunity to try the collagen drops from Rodeal because number one, these are much more eco-friendly than single-use collagen ampules, the ones that I would just break apart once and only get one use out of the little vial. This is much more eco-friendly and also these have one of the highest collagen concentrates on the market. This is 30% collagen. This is an ingredient that makes my skin feel more plump and that is all that I am looking for in life. So I like to take like four drops, four to five drops just depending and mix this in with my moisturizer and then apply all over my face. I also get my neck it just gives me a little extra plumping. You can also apply collagen. Most collagen products, including this one, you can apply directly to the skin, but I tend to not like the way that collagen feels on my skin. It has a little bit of a tackiness to it. That's just the nature of collagen. It has a little bit of tackiness. You can't really take that out of it without, I'm sure, like messing up the the makeup of it. So it does have a little bit of tackiness when used on its own, and I. I don't like that. It disappears after like maybe 30 seconds, but for me, it's just, it's a texture I just don't enjoy. So I really like mixing it in with my moisturizer because I get the nice plumping effects of the collagen, but I don't get that tackiness because when it's mixed in with my moisturizer, I honestly can't, I can't feel that it's, I can't feel any difference in how my moisturizer feels. I just can tell that my skin after about five to 10 minutes is gonna look a little bit more plumped up than it does just using the moisturizer solely. And like, look how radiant 
and beautiful the back of my hand is now. That's where I mix the moisturizer with the collagen and it's just like, oh my gosh, beautiful. I like to leave these eye patches on for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, they've only been on for about 10. So I'm gonna give myself like five more minutes. I'm gonna enjoy my iced caramel macchiato and I'll be right back. Look how pretty these are. They have like a little bit of glitter. It's not like glitter that's going on your skin. It's just glitter that's baked into the jelly part. It's just so pretty. Ooh. All right, we're back. These have been on for 20 minutes now, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them off. These have hyaluronic acid in them. And one thing, whenever you're using something with hyaluronic acid, you wanna make sure that you put some kind of moisturizer on top of it. Anytime you use a serum that has hyaluronic acid in it, which eye patches are basically little patches that have serum baked into them that then, you know, goes into the place wherever you have put them. So we wanna make sure we just get a little bit of moisturizer. You can use an eye cream. Today I'm just using some of the moisturizer I used on the rest of my face because I wanna make sure that I lock in that hyaluronic acid and give it some moisture to pull into the skin. On days when I'm not wearing foundation, I do like to put some kind of primer down on my skin just to kind of help just blur a little bit any texture that I might have going on. And I also like to use a primer that has some glow in it. I often find that things that have light reflectivity tend to give a little bit of a blurring effect. So today I'm gonna be using one of my favorite primers. I've used this several times on my channel. This is the Rodeal Instant Glow Primer. I absolutely love this because the shade is so perfect to me. It's described as a warm apricot glow, but I find that it's just a really good neutral. There's a little bit of like, almost like rose gold along with a little bit of like a banana shift going on that just gives you the perfect neutral glow that's not gonna look too cool and not gonna look too warm. So you're warming your skin up, but not in a way that's gonna look unnatural if you're someone who is quite fair as I am. I like to mix this in sometimes with a moisturizer, but today I am gonna be mixing it in with my sunscreen because we cannot forget sunscreen, you guys. Sunscreen is super important. So I'm basically making my own glow Glowy sunscreen primer by mixing my favorite just everyday sunscreen with this instant glow primer I mean come on it's just so beautiful and it smells delicious I can't even put my finger on like what the scent is in the instant glow it's just really like a very nice fresh scent it's not fragrancy there's just something to it that smells really light, really refreshing. As soon as I put it on my skin, I never notice again. It just dissipates really quickly. But I actually really like that aspect of it because it feels very luxurious. And Rodeo, the whole brand, is very much based on skincare. So even their makeup products have skincare benefits, which is something you, you really start to appreciate <laughs> as you get older. But look at this glow. It's so nice. This is a fantastic primer, not only for no foundation days, I also have used this in several videos under a foundation. It's just a really nice lip from within glow. It's very candle lit. Seriously, the back of my hand, this hand is like so luxurious today. It's getting like red carpet treatment. I'm gonna have to start using my right hand sometimes too because I feel like I'm gonna like wake up 20 years from now and this hand is gonna be really like young and radiant and this one's gonna be like old and and wrinkly because I never put products on the back of it. <laughs> now for concealer. Oh, wait, I'm not using concealer today. That's right. I'm not gonna be using concealer today. I think that that's cheating. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like to wear concealer some days that I don't wear foundation, but, but Skin Store sent me this product from Rodeal, the Banana Low Lighter, this one right here. And I was not like that excited about it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm probably, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I've never used a low lighter. What are they talking about? I was not, I was not intrigued, not even in the slightest until I tried it for the first time. And oh my gosh, this is some voodoo right here. This is a complexion enhancer and it basically uses, I don't know, magic and some kind of light reflection to blur everywhere you put it and just give you the most like low lit glow you've ever seen in your life. It's just fantastic. I have been using this under my eyes in place of concealer for a few days now and I'm, I'm very impressed. 
very impressed. So I'm just gonna put a little bit right here and a little bit right here. And yes, to me, this is a little bit. If you're like, that's a lot, Ashley. Well, you should see how much concealer I normally use. So I'm just gonna rub this in. I put it just where I would normally put an under eye concealer. I usually take mine up a little bit. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to show you this because it's seriously like the coolest thing I've ever tried in my life. Maybe not the coolest thing I've ever tried, but it's up there. It's up there as far as makeup goes, or I guess not makeup since it's more of like a skincare makeup hybrid. I like blending this in with my finger just to get the warmth. Again, it still has that nice like light refreshing scent. Most of the Rodeo products tend to smell very similar. It's just a very nice light skincare scent. All right, this side is done. And as you can see, it looks smoother. It looks brighter under there. And I would be just fine to stop right here and not go any further, not put anything else under my eyes. Because generally, I tend to not like the way that concealer looks underneath my eyes when I'm not wearing a foundation. But I was lucky enough to get to take a Rodeal Masterclass. And the founder of Rodeal, Maria H., showed us this trick that I am now obsessed with obsessed with for how to use this in conjunction with concealer to make everything look just a little extra more perfected under the eye. So you take a little bit of the banana low lighter right here on the inside and then take whatever concealer you want to use under your eyes and put it right here on the outside and then blend the two together with your finger. Now, like I said, I generally don't like the way that concealer looks under my eyes when I don't have foundation on but what I found is that this trick makes it look super duper natural it helps it blend a little more it gives it a nice little bit of a glow it also shears out the concealer a little bit just so that everything under there looks more natural and more like oh I just woke up like this then oh I woke up and I put on concealer you know that's not what we're going for here I mean, blended beautifully. So flawless. It's pretty fantastic. I love, love, love an item that can multitask, and this is like a multitasking hero. It's like a magic wand. I also like to take a little bit and use it in the center of the face where I would normally kind of go in and maybe lighten up my face with a little bit of concealer. So I like to do that with this as well because I find it gives just a little bit of blurring and you don't need a lot of this. This like blends out pretty far. So you just need a teeny tiny bit. You don't need a lot. So I'm just putting a little bit here in this area just to blur a little bit because it does have a nice blurring effect. I think because of the light reflective properties that are in there, it just bounces the light and kind of makes the area that you put it on look a little bit more blurred, a little bit smoother, more perfected. But it does it in a way that looks so natural. It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. I'm sure you could probably blend this out with a brush. I have been using my fingers. That's one thing I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video. Definitely wash your hands before you, before you use any of these tips because when I do a no foundation look, I tend to use my fingers a lot because I like having the warmth from them to warm the product up into the skin since I don't have like a foundation on as like a all over base. Using my fingers just makes everything blend a little bit nicer. Skin prep is done. We're ready to move on to eyes, cheeks, and lips. But before we do, I want to again thank Skin Store for sponsoring this first portion of the video and remind you that if you're interested in trying any of these Rodeo products that I used for prepping my skin today, you can get 25% off on skinstore.com using the code Ashley25. Again, I make no money off of it. It's just a way for you to save some money if you like any of these products. Now for one of my favorite steps, blush because we need to add some color into these cheeks. When I don't wear foundation, I find it to be definitely more important for me to make sure I'm using a cheek color that is close to my natural flush. 
because my skin is quite neutral in tone it can lean a little bit cool but it has a lot of neutral properties i really really like to stick with blushes that are more on the neutral side so one of my new favorites for that is this rare beauty cream blush this is one of their melting blushes in the shade nearly neutral this is a beautiful, nice, neutral rose shade, so it's gonna look really good with my natural coloring. And it's also such a good formula to use with your fingers, which is what I love to do on days like today because I really, again, want this to melt into the skin and look really nice and natural. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit and I'm just gonna go to town. These really blend like an absolute dream. It's kind of insane how melty they got this formula. It's fantastic. So I'm going along the top of the cheekbone and then kind of just making little circles like this as I'm blending to kind of follow the natural shape of my face and where I would naturally blush. So for me, that's the easiest way to do it. I find the top of my cheekbone, I start there and I kind of do little circles just up into the hairline to follow the natural way that I would flush. You can also, once you get to the hairline, you can pull it up into the temples a little bit. And I like to go over right here above the brow bone, just so that I feel like I'm getting a really nice natural blush, the way it would look if I went outside and was like, got too cold or too hot, or, you know, if I said something embarrassing. <laughs> Then with whatever is left on my fingers, I don't add anything extra. I kind of just go across the nose right here. The key to doing this is that you don't want to pick up anything extra or it's going to look not cute. You just want like barely anything there. If it looks a little too light, I'll go back over it. And one thing I really like to do is I like to kind of pick the very highest point of my cheek near my eye, like near the corner of my eye. And I tend to like just darken that up a tiny bit and blend it out because a natural cheek flush is not like super natural. All, it's not like super even all the way around, you know? There's little places where it's darker. So for me, I like to just make sure that that very highest point right there, like the, the point where my cheekbone is the furthest out. If that makes sense for me, it's right here where it sticks out the most. I just like that part to be a little bit more flushed than the rest of the cheek. And for me, that's the most like flattering way to do it. And the most natural, like this looks like I'm just blushing. Next for brows, I'm just gonna brush through them with a clean spoolie. I swear by clean spoolies. I have so many of these, they're the best. I originally got them just because I've had lash extensions forever, so it's really helpful to have them to just brush my lash extensions out, but I end up using them for my brows just as often because brushing through your brows, I don't, I swear by it. I think it's just like some extra magic trick that makes everything look better. If your brows don't look good, just keep brushing them until they do. <laughs> I want quite a natural brow, but I do want to give just a little bit extra of a tint to it and make them look the tiniest bit fuller. I also want them to stay in place because my brows are quite wiry. So if I don't use a brow gel or some form of, you know, hold product they're kind of just going to go wonky within the next like 30 minutes today i'm using the brow butter from say i really like this for no makeup days because it holds the brow in place but the formula is like it's almost very dry and you may be thinking okay that doesn't sound great but for what I like it for, it really is. This is not something that I would use with a brow pencil. This is something that I use on days where the only product I want in my brow is just something to hold them because it's got a tint to it. So it's gonna make them look a teensy bit fuller, but it's not like a very wet product that's gonna be too much pigment. It's not gonna get crunchy. It's not gonna look unnatural. It just makes my brows look like they're naturally a little bit full and like they just want to stay in place naturally even though they don't so see this brow is done this is actually my bad brow so i probably should have started on this side but you get the point point. and when i'm doing this i just like brush them up like at the front i brush them up and then as i go over i kind of brush them like diagonally up towards the hairline 
ta-da! Like seriously, that brow is always better than this brow. I don't know why. I do not know why. Why? I want just a little bit of definition added to my eyes, so I'm gonna use one of my favorite cream shadows for that. This is All Natural Caviar Stick from Laura Mercier. I just put a little bit, just a little bit, ooh, we lost an eyelash, that's okay. Put a little bit on the lid, the mobile lid, and then I just use my finger to blend it up into the crease, just so that I'm giving a little bit of definition to my eyes a little bit of color to them, but it's not noticeable as being an eyeshadow. If you, you know, if I didn't have this eye bare, you really wouldn't think just in passing that I was wearing eyeshadow. So I love this color for that. If you are around my skin tone, maybe up to like, I would say three or four, sh three shades darker, this would probably work for you as well in this capacity. I'm gonna use a brightening eyeliner on my lower waterline just to make my eyes look a little bit brighter, a little more awake since we don't have, you know, base makeup on today. So I'm using this one from Kier Weiss. It's just a good brightening pencil. Pretty much every brand has one of these at this point. So whatever brand you know and trust, you can, can use theirs. I really like this one. It's quite creamy, but I have probably like I don't know, like 12 different <laughs> brands of brightening eye pencils. They mostly all work the same. I like doing the waterline trick. Everyone knows that one, but I've recently learned a new trick that I'm obsessed with, which is just taking this same brightening pencil and lining your top lash line with it. I know what you're thinking, what does that do? Well look, it actually brightens the eye. This eye now looks brighter than this one. It's crazy, it works. I don't know how it works. I don't know what the, the function is behind it, but the end result, I really like it. On a day like today where I'm going very minimal, no makeup makeup, I am very, very careful with my lower lash line. And what I found works best for me is to just use a brown mascara. My favorite, and by favorite, I mean the only one I own and ever use is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Mascara in brown. It's just really nice. I just barely go in and just coat those lower lashes because I don't want them to look like they have mascara on them. And for someone as fair as me, there's no way that a black mascara will ever look like I'm not wearing mascara. It's so very obvious. But a brown, I just look like I have a little bit thicker eyelashes under there. And if I get like any bit of like too much on there, I just kind of peel it off and I'm happy with this. Next, I'm just gonna use a little bit of powder. I'm gonna use a little bit of powder everywhere except my cheeks. I don't want to screw with my cheeks because I have like the perfect flush that I want and I don't want to take anything away from it. So I'm just gonna lightly powder everywhere else. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I really like this powder for pretty much everything. It's my favorite powder at this point. Um, but it's really good for days like today where you don't have a foundation on because it does have a little bit of a blurring property to it. So it just perfects your skin just a little bit more. Last step before lips, we're going to bronze. Bronzing when I'm doing no foundation is a little bit different than how I bronze a lot of other days. Like today, because I'm not wearing foundation, I just want to warm my skin up in the most natural way possible. So I'm gonna take this brush right here. This one's from Hourglass. You can use any any big fluffy brush that's gonna give you a little bit of control. The reason I like this one is because it's got a bit of a taper to it. So I can get a little more control with it, but it's still quite loose. So it's not going to be too dense and deposit too much powder or too much bronzer. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. This is a great bronzer because it's so similar to the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. It gives that blurring effect. I pick up a little bit of this, dust off the extra, and to bronze, I'm going to stick to the very outer perimeter of my face. So I like to start like here, go up just on the very edges. I am not trying to pull this down a lot at all. I'm really sticking to the edges of my face. When I get down here to where my cheekbone is, I'll pull it under my cheek, like into the hollow of my cheek, just a teeny tiny bit to give a teensy tiny bit of definition and warm that area up. But we're, I mean, we're staying like, we're on the edge here. We're on the edge of glory. 
Lady Gaga. I can't sing or I would. And I bring it under the jawline just a teensy bit. And see, this for me is perfect because this literally right here is exactly where I would get a little bit of sun. Like if I <laughs> missed my sunscreen, this is one spot where I would 110% have like a little bit of sun. So keeping things to the outer perimeter of your face, it really does warm the skin up in the most natural way possible, which is definitely what you wanna do if you're not wearing foundation. You don't wanna look like you just did a full makeup look, but without foundation. That doesn't, I mean, maybe you do. If you do, that's cool. You can do whatever you wanna do. But for me, that's not what I want when I don't wear foundation. I just wanna look nice, natural, polished, like put together as if I really didn't try. I don't want it to look like, there are some looks that it's like obvious that you were trying to look like you weren't trying. I want a look to look just like I didn't try, period. Like I just happen to be a pretty, pretty princess, you know? For lips, I'm gonna be using my favorite late 2000s trick, which is lip liner and a chapstick, but Instead of chapstick, it's Kush Lip Balm from Milk Makeup. And the lip liner I'm using is Victoria Beckham Lip Definer number three. This is like an amazing lip definer because it's so, so creamy. And the shade is perfect for me. You wanna use like a shade that's very similar to your natural lip color, just like deepened a couple shades or bumped up a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. I line, just start lining. See how that tone is very similar to my natural? It's just deeper because I want to define my lips, but I want them to still look like my lips. So I'm gonna define all the way around and I'm gonna pull the lip liner in with the pencil about halfway. So this is how I want my lip liner to look. It's lined and we pulled it in like halfway. It doesn't have to be super perfect because we're gonna, we're gonna smudge it out here with the next step. You can use a regular not colored chapstick. You could use cherry chapstick. I'm using Kush Lip Balm. It's my fave lip balm. And this is the shade Bubble, which is a nice like pop of pink. It works really well for my skin on like every day. It's just a nice natural pink color. I'm gonna put this all over and rub my lips together. And then just anywhere that it comes out of the line, I'll kind of clean it up. Maybe do a second layer. Ta-da! I love this look because it looks like you just threw on like a chapstick or a lip balm. It looks like that's your natural lip color and you threw chapstick on top of it. Like I would love if this was my natural lip color all the time. That would be fantastic. I'm just gonna fluff my hair up a little bit. I have been kind of in the mood for like 90s fluffy hair lately. I saw a meme that was like talking about bringing back 90s fluffy hair. And as someone with naturally curly hair that just loves to have <laughs> all the volume in the world as long as I don't weigh it down because it's also very fine. Anyway, my point is that's the kind of hair I can get on board with because that is a lot more easy for me to achieve than like the 2000s stick pin straight, really sleek hair. I'm never gonna have glass hair. 90s fluffy hair? Yes, I can do that. I absolutely love this. I feel like it looks so youthful. Like when I look at this, I feel like this is a makeup I should have been wearing in high school, but I was too busy putting on foundation. What was wrong with me? Ah, oh, this is what I should have been going with. I wish I would have had me around to tell me to not wear foundation, but I didn't. I feel pretty natural, fresh, polished. This for me is a perfect, perfect face day. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope some of these tips help you. Let me know in the comments below, do you wear foundation most days or do you just skip it? Also, be sure to check out the description box below. I have my February giveaway is still going on. Also, if you're interested in any of these Rodeo products, the code Ashley25 will get you 25% off on skinstore.com. All the details for that are down below and everything that I use in this video will be linked down there as well. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, you take care of yourself. Bye.